Adam Bazalgette here in Naples, Florida, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. That was a nine iron chip of about 50, 60 feet chipping. Let's talk about chipping and how to be successful at it. Now, first thing I would say is until you can have pretty consistent contact, until you've achieved that, you've really got to camp there because that is the foundation. Until you get that, you're never really going to develop distance control. So let me give you two things about the stroke and then two things about the setup, at least broad brush that'll help you get a handle on that. The stroke itself, let me say this, if you play tennis, and I must confess I don't much, but if you have a little shot at the net, which is kind of an equivalent of a chip, not much power needed, you need the racket and the racket shaft pretty stable. I don't think you see a great player on TV flipping at the ball like that. So similarly, when you chip, you have to have passive wrists. Now let me just qualify that by saying not stiff wrists. There should be some play in the club and a little bit of the natural to and fro motion. You should feel the weight of the club, but fairly passive, and that shaft should be pretty stable as you hit. Okay, number two, as you make your stroke, if, you're, if your wrists are passive, you've got to get more energy from your trunk. Now, unlike a powerful full shot, we're not going to use the lower body nearly as dynamically here. In fact, for the most part, it's to give you stability and balance. But as you pivot your trunk back and forward and create this movement, it's still correct that your lower body should float through and just glide through a little bit. You see my right knee and ankle. A little bit like if I was tossing a tennis ball to someone. Okay, those are two things, stable wrists, power source more the body. How do we set that up? Number one, when you stand to a chip, feet should be very close together, nearly touching if you're near the green. Why is that important? When your feet are close together, your body is more mobile. You can pivot and turn better. A wide stance is just good for stability. We don't really need that on a shot like this. So feet close together, and I'd say one more thing. I would slightly take my toes and knees, preset them to the target so it's a little easier to get through. Now the last thing I would say about the setup, and this in, involves uh, the positioning of the body relative to the ball, very critical for hitting the ball solidly. Your bottom of your swing is likely to occur about under your body center, particularly in the absence of dynamic movement. So you've got to make sure that body center, those shirt buttons, are at least up to the ball. See a lot of golfers put their hands forward, but they tilt their body back. You're going to hit the ground too early if you do that. So practice that. Take a golf ball, drop it from your shirt buttons and make sure it's in front or at least up to the ball you're gonna hit. So if you can get the right motion and get yourself prepped with your stance and your chest location to do that motion, I think you'll have some success chipping. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. We'll get you some more free content. Subscribe you to the channel. You can make a comment below. I'll get to that. If it's about your swing, I'll try to get to that too. Uh, again, Scratch Golf Academy has a host of information I hope you'd find helpful. I hope you'll browse there. And most of all, I hope this helps you with your chipping.